Dreams Laude. Hey guys, welcome to Biology Insights and we are back with another video lecture of the series Inheritance Biology. Study of inheritance was all started from Mendelism and as time passed and technology grew up, non-Mendelian strains were found out. The phenomenon seen in these rule breakers are known as extension of Mendelism. As we have seen almost all of them, today we'll talk about apostasis. Last but not the least of non-Mendelism. We know Mendel's studies, where he observed one gene responsible for one trait. But as science expanded, and as we have learned it also, that one gene for one phenotype is not necessary. There can be many genes responsible for one trait. And sometimes, genes interact with each other to express a phenotype. We all know the meaning of interaction, where behaviors of two fellows are dependent on each other, just like that, when expression of one gene depends on the presence or absence of another, it is known as gene interaction. And if the interaction of genes at different loci affects the same character, it is called apostasis. The term apostasis was first given by Betson in 1909 and described that from two different genes that affect the same character, one masks the expression of other gene where the one who masks the other is called apostatic gene and the one whose expression is masked is called hypostatic gene. Let's understand it by an example of coat colors in Labrador dogs. If you have observed, there are three different coat colors seen in them, yellow, brown and black. If we take a closer look to genotype of it, two genes Y and B present on different loci affect the coat color. Dominant allele for B gene produce ligand for black color and recessive one produce ligand for brown color. Now these ligands have to be interacted to melanocortin 1 receptor to give respective coat color. Melanocortin 1 receptor is produced by dominant allele of Y gene. In case of recessive Y allele, absence of the receptor leads to yellow coat color. Now if we cross homozygous black with homozygous yellow dog and allow the cell fertilization of heterozygous black F1 generation, we would observe the phenotypic ratio of 9 is to 3 is to 4 in F2 generation, which is deviated from normal 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio. As you can observe here, four yellow progenies are homozygous for recessive Y allele. So we can say that allele Y is recessive to Y allele but apostatic to both the alleles of B gene. This kind of apostasis where recessive alleles at one locus masks the expression of both dominant and recessive alleles at another locus is called recessive apostasis or supplementary apostasis. Apart from recessive apostasis, there are other types of apostasis too. We would go through each of it one by one. Let's consider the next one, called duplicate recessive apostasis. Here, recessive allele at either of the two loci can mask the expression of dominant alleles at the two loci. In other words, each of the recessive allele is apostatic over the dominant allele of the other gene. Best example of it is flower color in sweet pea, which is either white or purple. If the plant contain anthocyanin, it is purple, and if they don't, they are white. Now if we cross two different varieties of white flowers, we would obtain F1 generation having purple flowers. Interesting, right? Furthermore, when this generation is allowed to self-fertilized, the phenotypic ratio is 9 is to 7 in F2 generation. As you can see here, 7 white progenies are homozygous for either recessive allele B or recessive allele C. It's observable that recessive alleles complement the effect of each other by giving the same phenotype and that's why this is also known as complementary apostasis. One plausible explanation of it is that it is a two-step process and each dominant allele produces an enzyme that controls a step in the synthesis of anthocyanin from biochemical precursor. If a dominant allele is not present, its step in biosynthetic pathway is blocked and anthocyanin is not produced. So in this case, recessive allele C is apostatic to dominant P allele 
and recessive allele P is apostatic to dominant C allele. Complicated but interesting, isn't it? Moving further, let's talk about dominant apostasis. This is referred as simple apostasis. And here, dominant allele at one locus can mask the expression of both alleles at other locus. An example of it is fruit color in summer squash. There are three types of colors in this cucumber, white, yellow, and green, which is controlled by two different genes, W and G. Let's try to pictureize what is happening here. This is a white cucumber, which is having compound A in it. If the plant is having recessive W allele, there would be a production of enzyme 1, which will convert compound A into compound B that is green in color. But if the plant is having dominant W allele, conversion from A to B is inhibited. Taking consideration of second gene, if the plant is having dominant G allele, production of enzyme 2 will convert compound B to compound C, which is yellow in color. But the plants having recessive G allele would not have functional enzyme 2, so the color would remain green. Now a cross between white and yellow fruit plants would have all white fruits because W is dominant over G. Self-fertilization of these would have plants with white, yellow and green colored fruits in 12 to 3 to 1 ratio for F2 generation. As you can see here, presence of even one dominant W suppresses the expression of pigment producing gene and so it is apostatic to both the alleles of G gene. This is all about dominant apostasis. But if the dominant allele present at either of the two loci can mask the expression of recessive alleles at the two loci, it is known as duplicate dominant apostasis. Classic study of it was performed by George Schull using a weedy plant called Shepherd's Purse. The seed capsules of these plants are either triangular or ovoid in shape. The dominant gene A and B are for triangular shape and recessive are for ovoid shape. Crossing between triangular and ovoid seed capsule plants give rise to heterozygous progeny having triangular seed capsules. Self-fertilization of this generation shows 15 is to 1 ratio of triangular to ovoid phenotype. As you can see, presence of any one allele of either gene leads to triangular phenotype. The reason behind it is there are two different pathways, means duplicate developmental pathways that can produce a triangular capsule. One pathway involves dominant allele of the gene A and the other one involves dominant allele of the gene B. A precursor substance can be converted into product that leads to triangular seed capsules through any of these pathways. So possibility of having ovoid seed capsule is only and only when plant is homozygous recessive for both A and B gene. Pretty reasonable to have 15 is to 1 ratio, right? The next one is dominant inhibitory apostasis. In this phenomenon, a dominant allele at one locus can mask the expression of both alleles at second locus. And as it shows inhibitory action, it is known as inhibitory gene interaction. An example of it is anthocyanin pigmentation in rice. The colors of the plant are governed by gene P. Presence of dominant allele P gives purple color and recessive one gives green color. Here the interesting thing is that this reaction is being affected by another gene called gene I. Presence of even one dominant allele I produce a protein that can inhibit the action of gene P. But the presence of recessive I has no effect. So cross between green and purple plants gives heterozygous green F1 generation and self-fertilization of this generation would have ratio of 13 is to 3 for green to purple plants. Out of 13, 12 progenies are green due to the inhibitory action of dominant allele I, while the last progeny is green because it is homozygous recessive for both the genes. So recessive I is having no inhibitory action and recessive P gives green phenotype. In this case, dominant allele I is inhibitory apostatic to dominant and recessive alleles of gene P. Here we wrap up with the enlisted topics of extension of Mendelism. But yet a long run for inheritance is there. To be a part of it, 
subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified whenever new insights of biology is introduced. If you enjoyed the lecture, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your study partners. See you in the next lecture.